gentlemen, I welcome all members present in person or by proxies, as well as any guests or visitors who may come with us today. I now proceed to the ordinary business of the meeting. Uh, in accordance with the agenda outlined in the notice on page 7 of the 2018 annual report, I will now proceed with the ordinary business of the 2019 annual general meeting. And the first item would be reports and the director's reports and accounts. Um, I'll ask the chief executive officer to table the accounts for the financial year ended December 31, 2018, and the report of the directors thereon. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Um, now we take the report of the auditors and. Um, I now invite Ms. Kian Sodlo, Chartered Accountant, to read the independent report of the auditors. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Reading of the independent auditors' report, uh, page 35 in the annual report. So, independent auditors' report to the members of TTEF Limited, report on the audit of the financial statements. Opinion. We have audited the financial statements of TTEF Limited, the company which comprise the Statement of Financial Position as at 31 December 2018, the Statements of Comprehensive Income, Changes in Equity and Cash Flows for the year that ended, and notes comprising significant accounting policies and other explanatory information. In our opinion, the accompanying financial statements give a true and fair view of the financial position of the company as at 31 December 2018, and of its performance and cash flows for the year that ended in accordance with international financial reporting standards IFRS, and the Jamaican Company Act. Basis for opinion. We have conducted our audit in accordance with international standards on auditing, ISAs. Our responsibilities under those standards are further described in the auditor's responsibilities for the audit of the financial statements section of our report. We are independent of the company in accordance with the International Ethics Standards Board for Accountants Code of Ethics for Professional Accountants, the ISBA Code, and we have fulfilled our other ethical responsibilities in accordance with the IS record. We believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. Key audit matters. Key audit matters are those matters that in our professional judgment were of most significance in our audit of the financial statements of the current period. These matters were addressed in the context of our audit of the financial statements as a whole and inform our opinion thereon and we do not provide a separate opinion on these matters. For each matter below, our description of how our audit addressed the matter is provided in that context. We have fulfilled the responsibilities described in the auditor's responsibilities for the audit of the financial statement section of our report, including in relation to these matters. Accordingly, our audit included the performance of procedures designed to respond to our assessment of the risks of material misstatement of the financial statements. The results of our audit procedures, including the procedures performed to address the matters below, provide the basis for our audit opinion on the accompanying financial statements. Page 36. So key audit matter, um, allowance for expected credit losses. As described in note 2D1, and in accordance with the IFRS 9 financial instruments, the company applies the simplified approach to computing expected credit losses, ECLs, on trade receivables and the general approach for debt instruments. The measurement of ECLs requires management to consider its historical credit loss experience and current business conditions, adjusted for forward-looking factors such as economic indicators, which may impact a debtor's ability to pay. Where the general approach is applied, judgment is used in determining whether there has been a significant increase in credit risk and estimating the probability of default and loss given default. The ECLs being recorded are therefore considered to be highly subjective. How our audit addressed the key audit matter? So our procedures, amongst others, included the following. We evaluated the techniques and methodologies developed by the company in order to estimate ECLs and assess their compliance with the requirements of IFRS 9. We assessed the reasonableness of the methodologies and assumptions applied by validating the completeness of the inputs used to derive the loss rates, which are an integral <coughs> which are integral to the provision matrix used in determining the ECLs for trade receivables. For financial assets classified as debt instruments and cash and cash equivalents, we corroborated management assumptions with data from external sources, 
particularly with respect to the determination of whether there has been a significant increase in credit risk, probabilities of default, and loss given default rates. We also assess the adequacy of disclosures in the financial statements. So on to page 37, key audit matter, revenue recognition under IFRS 15, revenue from contracts with customers. The company adopted IFRS 15, revenue from contracts with customers, using the modified retrospective transitional method of adoption. Note 2D2, use of estimates and judgments under the section revenue recognition under IFRS 15, details management's judgments when applying the five-step approach applied by the standard. The contracts with their customers as follows. One, identify the contracts with a customer. Two, identify the performance obligations in the contract. Three, determine the transaction price. Four, allocate the transaction price to the performance obligations in the contract. Five, recognize revenue when or as the entity satisfies a performance obligation. The standard also requires management to identify the performance obligations in a bundled sale of equipment and installation services and determine the timing of satisfaction of the performance obligations. It also requires management to determine whether it has whether it acts as a principal or agent in executing the contracts and if there are significant financing components included in the promised payment amounts. How we have how our audit addressed the key audit matter? We have obtained and reviewed management assessment and understood the underlying assumptions used to support the calculations for IFRS 50 and the impact on open and retained earnings. We also evaluated the appropriateness of the company's revenue recognition policy in comparison to the requirements of the standard. We reviewed management's computations and independently reviewed a sample of contracts and evaluated them in accordance with the five-step approach as follows. One, we obtained and reviewed established signed contracts to validate that legitimate contracts exist with customers. Two, we identified the relevant performance obligations as stipulated by the contracts. Three, we verified the transaction prices that are explicitly stated in the contract associated with the relevant performance obligation. Four, we obtained and reviewed invoices on a sample basis, along with supporting reports confirming evidence of work carried out and performance obligations met. Additionally, where bundled services were offered, we assessed whether the transaction price should be allocated to each performance obligation. Five, based on the above, we verified that revenue was properly recognized in the correct period. We also assessed management's assertion that the company acts as a principal for the equipment sold as they exercise control over the related assets, including warranties and software licenses purchased from third parties and resold to the customers. Page 38, short-term advances received from customers were tested to determine whether any significant financing components were identified. These advances were generally settled within one year. We also reviewed the disclosures for appropriateness in accordance with IFRS 15. Other information included in the annual report. Management is responsible for the other information. The other information comprises of the information included in the annual report for the year ended 31 December 2018, but does not include the financial statements and our auditors report thereon. The annual report is expected to be made available to us after the date of the auditors report. Our opinion on the financial statements does not cover the other information, and we will not express any form of assurance conclusion thereon. In connection with our audit of the financial statements, our responsibility is to read the other information identified above when it becomes available, and in doing so, consider whether the other information is materially inconsistent with the financial statements, or our knowledge obtained in the audit, and otherwise appears to be materially misstated. Responsibilities of management and the board of directors for the financial statements. Management is responsible for the preparation of the financial statements that give a true and fair view in accordance with IFRS and the Jamaican Companies Act, and for such internal control as management determines is necessary to enable the preparation of the financial statements that are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error. In preparing the financial statements, management is responsible for assessing the company's ability to continue as a going concern, disclosing as applicable matters related to going concern, and using the going concern basis of accounting unless management either intends to liquidate the company or to seize operations, 
or has no realistic alternative but to do so. The board of directors is responsible for overseeing the company's financial reporting process. Page 39, the auditor's responsibilities for the audit of the financial statements. Our objectives are to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, and to issue an auditor's report that includes our opinion. Reasonable assurance is, is a high level of assurance, but it is not a guarantee that an audit conducted in accordance with ISAs will always detect a material misstatement when it exists. Misstatements can arise from fraud or error and are considered material if individually or in aggregate they could reasonably be expected to influence the economic decisions of users taken on the basis of these financial statements. As part of our audit, in accordance with ISAs, we exercise professional judgment and maintain professional skepticism throughout the audit. We also identify and assess the risks of material misstatement of the financial statements, whether due to fraud or error, design and perform audit procedures responsive to those risks, and obtain audit evidence that is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. The risk of not detecting a material misstatement resulting from fraud is higher than one than for one resulting from error, as fraud may involve collusion, forgery, intentional omissions, misrepresentations, or the override of internal control. Obtain an understanding of internal control relevant to the audit in order to design audit procedures that are appropriate in the circumstances, but not for the purpose of expressing an opinion on the effectiveness of the company's internal control. Evaluate the appropriateness of accounting policies used and the reasonableness of accounting estimates and related disclosures made by management. Conclude on the appropriateness of management's use of the going concern basis of accounting and based on the audit evidence obtained, whether a material misstatement exists, related to events or conditions that may cast significant doubt on the company's ability to continue as a going concern. If we conclude that a material uncertainty exists, we are required to draw attention in our auditor's report to the related disclosures in the financial statements, or if such disclosures are inadequate to modify our opinion. Our conclusions are based on the audit evidence obtained up to the date of our auditor's report. However, future events or conditions may cause the company to cease to continue as a going concern. Evaluate the overall presentation, structure, and content of the financial statements, including the disclosures and whether the financial statements represent the underlying transactions and events in a manner that presents a true and fair view. We communicate with the board of directors regarding, among other matters, the planned scope and timing of the audit and significant audit findings, including any significant deficiencies in internal control that we identify during our audit. Page 40. We also provide the board of directors with a statement that we have complied with the relevant ethical requirements regarding independence and to communicate with them all relationships and other matters that may reasonably be thought to bear on our independence and where ap applicable related safeguards. From the matters communicated with the Board of Directors, we determined those matters that were of most significance in the audit of the financial statements of the current period and are therefore the key audit matters. We describe these matters in our auditor's report unless law or regulation precludes public disclosure about the matter or when, in extremely rare circumstances, we determine that a matter should not be com communicated in our report because the adverse consequences of doing so would reasonably be expected to outweigh the public interest benefits of such communication. So report on additional requirements of the Jamaican Companies Act, we have obtained all the information and explanations which, to the best of our knowledge and belief, were necessary for the purposes of the audit. In our opinion, Proper accounting records have been maintained, so far as appears from our examination of those records. And the financial statements, which are in agreement therewith, give the information required by the Jamaican Companies Act in the manner required. The engagement partner on the, on the audit resulting in this independent auditor's report is Winston Robinson, Ernst & Young, Kingston, Jamaica, the 27th of February, 2019. I'm going to ask the Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Christopher Record, and afterwards, Mrs. Hortense Gregory Nelson, our Finance Manager, 
to comment on the financial performance during 2018, as well as to provide some strategic highlights for 2019. Chris? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being here. So just a reminder what your company does. We provide information and technology services in a different way. Today I had to do a presentation for some folks and I had to try to explain exactly what a managed service provider does and that we provide IT services on the contract, on the multi-year contract with customers. We implement software and we provide these services, most importantly, proactively. In other words, we don't sit and wait until something breaks on and then run in to the organization. We are connected into the system and we are able to do uh, repairs and adjustments to the customer's infra infrastructure to keep it running. The range of services fall in these descriptions, um, service desk, infrastructure management, unified communication, cloud migration services, IT security, and consulting. So these are the services that the organization provides as a reminder. Last year, uh, we had a change of leadership in the organization, and Teddy, who is now the chairman of the organization, um, stepped up, st stepped out as CEO, and I stepped in. So uh, it happened last year, so we're just reporting on it as part of, um, as part of the report. This is our board. Um, some members are here, and Teddy had um, tendered apologies for the folks that are not here. Um, Tracy Ann Spence was our, is our newest board member. And Tracy, and welcome to our first AGM. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Our management team, 2018 was a, was a good year for TTEC. We saw increased revenues uh, with uh, percentages in the region of 30.7%. So the revenues were up from 20, 2017 up 217.2 million to 283.9 million. Profits were up 47.8% from 18.6 million to 27.5 million. Now, one of the things in looking at the results from, from an, an, an organization like ours, it's um, with IT services sometimes, with some organizations, it's a feast and famine. With a managed services business, where we sign multi-year contracts with organizations, one of our key indicators that we look for is our monthly recurring revenue. So for 2018, compared with 20, 2017, our monthly recurring revenue is actually up 19.23% year over year. So that's a very, very important number for us. And we, our, aim, our, our aim is to have that number, that monthly recurring revenue, um, keep increasing. We don't extract it and highlight it separately, but we just acknowledge and we just tell you exactly what the percentage is uh, for, for that number. Earnings per share increased by 44.4%. Um, and the 2017, it was 18, 18 cents a share. Right? At, at the end of 2018, it was 26 cents a share. So uh, highlights-wise, uh, that was our five year, over our 2018 numbers. We did give a comparison of where we were year over year for the last five years. Um, you may note that 2017 took a small dip behind 2016. One main reason there, we had a, a very big project in, 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 in 2016. And so when you have big projects, there's always a, an extra bump with, with, with one specific project. But the trend is heading in the right direction. And for that, we're very, very happy and we're very, very grateful for that. TTEC continues to do a fair amount of, a fair amount of activities with and for our, our team members. We have annual events and we have quarterly events. Um, on the right-hand side, we saw that, that, that sip and paint uh, event there. That was actually a graduation ceremony, and that graduation ceremony was for a, a program that we conducted starting towards the end of 2018 called Engage and Grow, where we had a consultant, a consultant come in. There's an organization based in Australia that comes into the organization, does deep analysis, uh, and then extract, extract activities to help the team to, um, as the program says, engage and help the company to grow. And so we started that activity in, uh, towards the end of 19, 2018 with the management team. And then that was con con uh, continued to first, and I think ended the first part of the second quarter in this year. On the screen are just some of the activities that were, um, that were done during the, during, during the, during the year. It was, um, it, was a, it, was an exciting, it was an exciting set of engagement activities that the team found, um, found, found very positive, and a number of these activities we continue to do throughout the, throughout the organization. 
customer engagement, we had a good number of events for, for 2018, our largest being TechCon. It's uh, first of its kind in Jamaica where it's an IT conference that is ho hosted by a local IT company. There are other business conferences out there, but there's none that's hosted by an IT company that seeks to inform and educate um, our business customers out there as to all the possibilities of IT. Um, so we are continuing to, to, to expand on this. We are reaching out to external speakers and the feedback that we've gotten on the TechCon event is, has been very, very, very positive. We also continue to do smaller engagements where we invite in rooms similar to this, maybe anywhere between 10 to 25 IT lead, lead, leadership from organizations, IT leadership mainly, and just have you know very de detailed discussion about what helps them and what help they need with respect to IT and IT support. So it's uh, kind of driven by our consulting team and it's something that we will continue to do throughout, throughout the year. These specific pictures here show some of the presentations that we do in association with some of the associations that we are members of. So whether it's the Jamaica Computer Society, whether it's the PSOJ, whether it's um, any, of, any of the J Jamaica Chamber of Commerce and organizations like this that we, we deliver through them, deliver some of the intellectual property that we have. We continue to add and upgrade software within the organization to help with delivering the services that I've introduced to earlier. So more recently, we continue to fine tune some of the software that we have we made investments in in the last few years. A lot of the software is modular. So each year we may, uh, we may turn on another piece of the software and this helps us to A, measure the effectiveness and efficiency of what we're doing for the customers and more importantly, also capture feedback from the customers directly after we have delivered um, the service to them. So uh, there, there are processes which, which our organizations submit help requests. We in turn have processes, some automatic and some um, not automatic that we go through and respond to the organization. And then at the end of it, that customer is able to rate us and you know, tell us from a scale of let's say it's one to four, you know, one being horrible, four being amazing, how well we did in that response. And we're able to capture that information and track it. And of course, if something is not favorable, then we're able to reach out to the customer and deal with, and, and deal with that response uh, directly. So at a high level, um, what we're seeing here is just some, of, some screen capture of some of the new additional activities that we were able to do in 2018. We also added, um, we also added some, let's call it, not to get technical, but NOC, Network Operation Center features, where our operations team are able to uh, have a glance. We have screens and monitors that we have implemented in the organization that we're able to, at a glance, look at groupings of companies to figure out trends as to what's happening with some of the, some of the solutions that, we are, that we're helping with them. So enough of the technicality, right? No more technical. Just a reminder of our vision um, is to help achieve greatness by you know, delivering insanely good IT services. Our, our, our brand promise, we have a brand promise of delivering insanely good IT, um, deli delivering insanely good customer experience to something that we continue to improve. And um, I guess next year you will hear about some of the things that we have won, although uh, I, can, I can mention some of them now. But we have uh, you know, our creed that we just put together by internal team. And of course, the mission is to, is to um, deliver on this through an in engaged, highly engaged um, team members. Some of our CSR activities include, but not limited to, taking part in taking part in activities that a number of our own team members in the office uh, support. So whether it's their church groups or their own associations, they'll come to us and we do evaluate what we think uh, makes sense, and then we get involved in it. So that may include 5Ks, that may include um, Labor Day projects at you know, basic schools and things like that that are close, either close physically to our office or they are part and parcel of, of that um, set of approved uh, requests that come, that come to us. On the top right, education is also important, important to T-Tech. Of course, tech-related education. And so the Youth Can Do It folks uh, came to us with an opportunity and we helped sponsor them. They went to Switzerland and they actually won the event. 
So we're very, very happy with, um, happy with you know, being a part, a part sponsor of their, of their activity. In terms of outlook and future, a map of the world is there. Um, we continue to look for opportunities. We have been having uh, some very interesting meetings and some possibilities have been presented to us with respect to expansion into new markets. So we have had conversations with folks out of Cayman. We have had conversations with folks out of Atlanta. Um, this, just, this week just passed at the Jamaica Diaspora event, which is um, st still happening. I think this morning was the last part of it. We continue to have, we continue to have, engage in, in, in potential partnership discussions and potential customer discussions with folks there. On the left-hand side, just uh, you know, one of the, our, our promotional materials that we, that we put out there on all of our social channels, speaking about um, the, the, the consulting, consulting services and also cybersecurity and cybercrime prevention and cybersecurity awareness continue to be something that we will work on in 2019 and beyond. Um, just a quick highlight of our Q1 numbers. So from the untrained eye, Q1 may have looked a little flat um, with respect to revenue. However, one of the things that we highlighted to our internal team and also to um, in, our, in our reports that we had, we had put out to the stock market and to folks who had actually asked about it, is that whilst Q1 last year uh, was at around what, 60, approximately 69 million, this Q1 this year was 66 million. Q1 last year had a major project in there. And Q1 this year did not have a major project in there. And so for me personally, that was um, very, very promising because remember that other key number I mentioned, our monthly recurring revenue, so additional uh, MSP contracts, support contracts are increasing, which, which um, provided, provided this, this result. So expenses are you know, relatively, relatively flat. Um, net profit was down due to a number of, act well, Hortense will explain some of those things, and I will just segue to her now that gives a little bit more detail about our, our, our position. Good afternoon, shareholders and visitors. We now present the report for the financial highlights for TTEC for the year 2018. In 2018, we saw growth in both our managed services and consulting services, which Chris explained earlier, will always have an impact on the revenues that we earn in any given period. So as revenues increased by 30.7% compared to 2018, we also saw increase in our expenses up to 31.8%. As we continue to grow, the major areas of investment that TTEC engages in is investment in our, both our people and our tools, and this is in response to the demand for our suite of services. We are seeing in excess of 10% growth in our pool of people to support our service delivery and also in, to increase our efficiency in our business. Regarding our revenue performance, our revenues which consist of both our recurring revenues and projects increased by 15.2% from our new customers. Due to this mix in the nature of our business offerings of managed services and projects, we will see bumps in our revenues over time as reflected by this graph. In 2018, as we said before, we saw 15% of our revenue from new customers. Regarding our net profit performance, we have seen a growth from 2017 of $27.5 million being our net profit, which is attributable to shareholders with an earning per share of 26 cents. And this is a growth, as mentioned before, of 18.6 in 2017 to 27.5 for 2018. These net profit, uh, or final net profit performance was impacted by both gains, losses um, from the fluctuation of the Jamaican dollar, along with reduced rates from our investment portfolio. And these are 
both impacted our overall performance. Regarding our asset and our shareholders' equity, during the year, our assets increased by 19.8% to $250.2 million. Our equity increased by 11.5% to $198 million. We also saw improvements in our cash resources of 17.3 to $35.8 million at the end of the year. TTEC has no long-term debt. And this low leverage allows the company and, and the business model of the company to provide services which does not require costly fixed expenditures or maintenance of inventory. In 2018, the financial reporting arena was impacted by the introduction of new international financial reporting standards, which impacted our financial statements, and these were shown on pages 46 and also in note 2 of the standards. So as the auditor had read before, there were detailed checks done, there were additional information required, and these would have resulted in what we present to you today. We look at our Q1, where we see uh, just a dip, as Chris went into detail about the reasons why for Q1. And we expect, as I said before, these are impacted by the type of projects we do and not just our monthly revenue. So we'll always have dips as we go along. But our performance for 2019 is expected to exceed our 2018. We mentioned just now the IFRS notes, and the two primary ones which were also mentioned prior were the IFRS 9 on financial instruments and IFRS 15, which is revenue from contracts with customers. So as a business, once you have any cash at all, the, you will be impacted by IFRS 9, even if it's just your regular day-to-day -day operational account. For IFRS 15, as a company with long-term contracts and short-term, the impact of IFRS 15 requires more details than would normally have been required to show in your financial statements. And TTEC adhered to these standards. And the impact is also shown on note 5 on page 72 that shows the impact on our revenues and also the expected credit losses, which impacted us in both receivables, inventory, contract liabilities, and retained earnings. So these required us to make some adjustments to both our opening and closing figures based on the new standard that required from us. As at the end of March, this graph shows where the movement in our share prices are. The starting price would have been when we went to market in our IPO in January 2016, and it ends at March 2019. And we have seen a growth that when we went to IPO, we had 340 shareholders, and as at March 31st, we have 590. We continue to see an actively traded stock and a market reflection in our share price. Ladies and gentlemen, the board and management are confident about the future of T-Tech Limited as our balance sheet remains strong. We continue to explore opportunities, as mentioned before, for new partnerships in 2019 while seeking revenues from markets outside of Jamaica. We aim to continue growing our shareholder value and providing an insanely good customer experience in the delivery of goods and services to our customers. Thank you. Thank you, Chris and Hortense. Um, and uh, we will be taking questions and providing answers for the reports that were just presented. Before I open the floor for questions, so, um, I would just, um, just also like to highlight an uh, area that the board paid a lot of attention to in 2018, which is that of corporate governance. And there's a pretty substantial report um, from the Corporate Governance Committee on page 19 of the annual report. Um, but I would just like to highlight that 
one of the things that uh, the company did receive was special recognition or uh, awards from the Jamaica Stock Exchange, um, where for 2018 we were awarded second runner prize for corporate disclosures and investor relations in the small business category, and same for best website small business category. So I think that's very commendable for the uh, the company, and I think it's an indication of the fact that. As an organization, we do take corporate governance very seriously because we truly understand the, not just the value that it brings, but the importance of it, particularly to the investment community. Okay. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, the floor is now open for questions. Um, again, I'd just like to remind um, shareholders to please identify yourself when asking questions so that we can make a note of who has asked a question. So, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is now open. And please use the microphone that's provided. Okay, well, if we have, should I say, going once, going twice? <laughs> All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, um, we have no questions for the reports that were and the presentations. Uh, I now ask a shareholder to propose resolution number one, that the audited accounts for the year ended December 31, 2018, together with the de director's report and auditor's report thereon be and are hereby adopted. May I have a proposal? Mr. Mark Martin. Mark? Barton. Barton, propose, and a seconder, Mr. Christopher Record, the G. Christopher Record. I thank the proposer and the seconder, and I'll now put resolution number one to the meeting for adoption. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? Okay, I declare resolution number one carried. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, next item of business is the reappointment is to reappoint the auditors. Uh, Messrs. Ernst and Young of 8 Olivia Road, Kingston 8 have agreed to continue as auditors of the company. So may I have a proposal and a seconder for resolution number two that Messrs. Ernst and Young be reappointed auditors of the company in accordance with section number 154 of the 2004 Companies Act and that their remuneration be fixed by the directors for the ensuing year. Posed by David Mr. David Rose, seconded by Mr. Hugh Allen. Thank you very much. I now put resolution number two to the meeting. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? No? By the way, David, there's a chair here at the front, if you wish. <laughs> Welcome. David was uh, not just a young investor, but someone who was recognized by the investment community for his achievements. Welcome, David. All right, the next item, next matter. Um, yes, you have uh, kind of <laughs> jumped ahead of me there, David. Thank you very much for that. Um, so what shareholder has suggested is that we take the re-election of directors uh, for those who are retiring and eligible for re-election. We do it on block rather than individually. So there are no objections. Proceed. Okay. So for the rotation of directors or the re-election of directors, Pursuant to Articles 102 and 108 of the company's Articles of Incorporation, the retiring directors eligible for re-election are Norman Chen, Gordon Christopher Record, and Tracy Ann Spence. So may I have a shareholder to propose that the retiring directors be and are hereby re-elected re on block? Mr. Rose, can I have you as a proposal? <laughs> And seconded by Mr. Bart. Okay. Thank both proposal and seconder. I now put the resolution to the meeting. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? Okay. So 
uh, that is carried and now I would like to have a shareholder propose resolution number three that retiring directors Norman Chen, Gordon Christopher Record and Tracy Ann Spence be and are hereby re-elected directors of the company. May I have a proposal? It's Leslie Cousins, seconded by? Oh, Mr. Thomas Chin. I thank both, proposal and seconder. And now I put the resolution to the meeting. Those in favor? Those against? Okay, I declare resolution carried. Now move on to item of special business, which is the director's remuneration, um, which is uh, we're seeking from the members approval of the director's compensation paid for the year ending December 31, 2018. So I'd now like to have a shareholder propose resolution number four that the amount of $1,510,000 included in the audited accounts of the company for the year ended December 31, 2018 as fees for their services as directors be and is hereby approved. Mr. David Rose has proposed, seconded by Mr. Boomfield. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you both. And I now put resolution number four to the meeting. Those in favor? Those against? No. I declare resolution number four carried. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the annual general meeting for T-Tech Limited for the year 2019.